Hi there. Um, welcome to our first and what I, I hope will be a series of uh, video clips about uh, natural gas leasing and exploration in Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm Dave Messersmith with Penn State Extension uh, based in Wayne County, Pennsylvania. And I'm joined here today with Tom Murphy. Tom is a, a Penn State Extension educator based in Lycoming County. And uh, Tom's been doing a lot of, uh, a lot of program educational work on natural gas exploration and leasing educating landowners across Pennsylvania for the past couple of years. So Tom, we're glad to have you with us today. Thank you, Dave. And, um, can you tell me a little bit about, about Penn State's natural gas leasing educational efforts, the leasing team, and how that all got started, and um, maybe some of the programs that you've been doing the past couple of years? Sure, Dave. We've had a number of, well, about our team. Our team has been comprised of uh, several uh, extension educators that uh, have been involved in this process for several years now. We've done a number of these uh, uh, educational programs as part of this overall project across the entire state of Pennsylvania at this point in time, in particular the, the northeast part of the state, the north central part of the state, and then down into the southwest. Um, we've had uh, oh, probably about 12,000 uh, individuals that come out, so it's been a well-received program. And the other thing is a number of us that are involved in the, the educational program are also involved on a personal level. But, uh, uh, we've seen this happen either uh, currently or sometime in the past. Okay. Um, all this, all this talk about natural gas has been centered around uh, Marcellus Shale, and we, we keep hearing a lot about Marcellus Shale. And can you tell us exactly what uh, what that is, um, where it occurs in Pennsylvania, how deep is it, any of those things? Sure. The Marcellus Shale is is a uh, layer of shale. It varies in thickness anywhere from about 20 feet to somewhere around 300 feet, depending upon where you're at in the state. And it runs in roughly a, a diagonal line or a sweeping line, we'll say, that uh, starts in the northeast corner of the state, uh, somewhere just below uh, Wayne County, and then runs down into somewhere around Somerset, uh, Fulton County, down into that area. So it makes kind of a big sweep around the, that part of the state. And everything to the west and north of that is really where it falls. It goes up into New York, then it goes down into uh, West Virginia, covers most of West Virginia, parts of Ohio, uh, even up into some, some uh, locations into the uh, lower part of Ontario. So it's a, it's a very wide area. It's about 53,000 square miles, or about 34 million acres. Very, very big. And about what, what depth does that occur in this thing? The Marcellus Shale in most places in Pennsylvania varies somewhere between uh, 5,000 feet and about 9,000 feet, again, depending upon where you are in the state. This, uh, the shale has been here for, for millions of years, uh, and we've known about it for probably 100, 150 years. Uh, why all the excitement about this shale now? You know, why is this discovery important now? A couple of things would would, uh, would answer that question. I think one of the most important things is the fact that uh, the technology to uh, to actually unleash the, the gas from uh, from the shale is really a, a critical part of this. Uh, they've developed some some technology down in the Barnett Shale down in Texas uh, within the last 15 to 20 years, and the, the key components of that are the um, the horizontal drilling, which allows them to drill down and then make a sweep and then drill out horizontally and retrieve more of the gas from any particular spot that they start at. And the other piece that's really critical is the fact that uh, this is in a very tight uh, shale formation. It's not like in a big pool down there. So they have to actually get down and break open that shale to actually release the gas. That process is called hydrofracking, and it's done through the use of a large amount of water and some very uh, small sand particles that are put down there, again, in great volume. And that holds open the shale to actually allow the gas to be released. So those two technologies have really been key. The other thing that's driving this, uh, the other two pieces, one would be the cost of, or the value of the gas, the commodity at this point is pretty high, running right now around $11 uh, per thousand. Uh, so, you know, you've got a good opportunity there for companies to make some money, so they're looking at this again. And the, the uh, last piece there would be proximity to marketplace. You're, you're looking at potentially one of the largest gas fields, which could be in the country now, and it's, it's right next to where the, the, the general marketplace is. So that, that's real good. Could you expand a little bit more on the, the drilling process? You talked about fracking and horizontal drilling. Um, can you just give a real brief description of what happens from the time when a landowner might sign a lease until there might be a finished well on the property? Sure. Typically what happens is once a landowner is approached and they actually make the commitment to, to, to sign a lease, uh, after that time it's not uncommon to see some seismic work done, which is what you alluded to earlier, 
Uh, the company comes in, they lay out the grid, they do the seismic, typically 3D seismic, determine where they want to drill the wells. Uh, at that point in time, they come in with a the crew, they do an ENS plan, uh, they put their ENS control measures, erosion setup control measures to make sure materials don't move off site, build the pad, uh, level the site out, bring the equipment in, start drilling. And typically they drill down uh, 5,000 feet or so vertically, and then they put over about a course of, of seven to 900 feet, they put a sweep and then they'll run their horizontal, if they're drilling horizontal, run that out to whatever their target depth and uh, distance is. Uh, after that point in time, they come in and they pull that back out, it's simplified here, uh, frack the well, which means they, they go through and fracture the stone, the gas is released, it's back up to the well, and at that point it's connected to a pipeline which takes it to marketplace. Some people make the mistake, they think that this can be trucked out, and it can't, it has to go by pipeline. So the pipeline process is an important part of this as well. And landowners need to be aware of uh, pipeline issues, like pipeline right-of-way issues, and, and being paid for that. Uh, if that's uh, not something that uh, was that was excluded in the lease. So there are a variety of issues there. And then after all that's done, then there's a renovation process where a company has a period of time by state law that they have to go back in and renovate the ground uh, and reseed it back to uh, the conditions uh, so it, it will not erode. And, and how long might that entire process take, especially from the drilling uh, through to a completed well? Typically, you're looking at something depending upon the site, depending upon the time of the year it is, but uh, typically you could be looking at something that might range in the three to four months. Uh, could be a little less, could be a little bit more, depending upon a variety of factors that, that might fall into that. And, and once the well is completed, how, do we know how long the lifespan is of a finished well in Marcellus Shale? Is it a, a five-year well? Is it good for how many years? Yeah, Dave, that's a tough question to answer. Um, the model that we've been using is a Barnett Shale, as a lot of companies have been using that uh, as well as a comparison. And there's wells down there that they, they drilled back in the uh, early 90s, and they're still producing gas. So that gives you some kind of an idea. But quite frankly, most geologists that we've talked to uh, are, are just not certain as to how long this will last in Pennsylvania. Uh, there's been people that have said, you know, it could be five years, could be 10 years, and, and some we've heard eventually out as far as uh, 30 years. But it really is still speculation at this point as to how long they will, they will actually produce. There is also the opportunity that companies can get back in if the, if the well starts to diminish in yield and refrack and open that, that well back up and allow more gas to be released. So they can rejuvenate the well over the course of some time. Along that same line of questioning with um, companies in Pennsylvania have been losing hundreds of thousands of acres right, across the western and northern parts of the state. Um, how rapidly do you see companies uh, uh, producing that gas, drilling wells and producing gas uh, across such a big region? region of the state? Hey, one of the things that I see is people are excited now that they see some drill rigs out there and they think, oh, they're going to, you know, they're going to hit my place next year or the end of the summer or whenever. But this is a this is a situation where you're probably talking about a decade or more, assuming that these initial wells actually show some some com commercial viability. Uh, assuming that takes place, this is going to take a while to build this out, uh, to drill the number of wells that, that, uh, that the companies are talking about, as well as putting it in the infrastructure, uh, pipeline and roads back to some of these sites and some of those kind of things. And also broader infrastructure in the broader economy, uh, other companies, service companies coming in and setting up shop, you know, the, the well providers and the well tenders and, and some of the other uh, auxiliary services that uh, feed this industry. Great. Well, Tom, thank you. It's been a uh, Pleasure to see you again today. Um, uh, we're glad to have you on our show, um, our, our amazing show, as you would. As you would. Um, if you're interested in learning more about natural gas leasing and exploration in Pennsylvania, uh, you can visit our website, and the address is www.naturalgas.psu.edu.